One lap to go. We could see something special here from former Razorback Shafiqua Maloney representing St. Vincent. 100 meters to go, 18 seconds to go under two minutes. Going to the arms, Shafiqua Maloney. She is going to go sub two. Well, not only did she clock sub two minutes, but Shafiqua Maloney has booked her ticket to Paris 2024, the Olympic Games, that is, to compete in the women's 800 meters. The 24-year-old Vincentron smashing her own national 800 meter record this past Saturday at the Tyson Invitational that happened in Arkansas, USA. Maloney clocked a lifetime best, one minute 58.69 seconds to win the event elevating her to the number two spot in the world in the women's 800 this year. Maloney joins us now on Zoom. Um, Shafiko, welcome to the Sports Max Zone. It's a pleasure for us here to be talking to you. Um, we saw the closing probably 50 meters that, uh, of the event just now, and I saw the arms driving, and I, I just figured that your coach's words were in your ears at the time. Talk to us about your finish and, and the personal best run. Uh, first, thank you for having me on here. It's a pleasure. Um, if you listen, uh, if you watch the video on YouTube, you can hear um, a better uh, audio of coaches yelling at us for every lap. So <laughs> when I came around at last 50, he was like, keep going, keep going. And so usually even if he's not there or whether or not he's there, I always go to my arms to last 50. So, you know, I always try to make that a habit. And when I got to that line and I realized how fast I could probably run, I was just like, you ain't got nothing to lose right now. And I just went to my arms. Yeah, I, I could see the arms. They were very noticeable. Uh, Shafiqwa, talk to us about your reaction to the performance because it's by far a, a PB for you. Um, are you surprised that you went that fast so early in the season? Uh, yes and no. Um, coach always told me, like, from since December that, you know, I could go sub two indoors and even make the Olympic standard. But I didn't think it was going to be that early. Um, but it, it happened. I was I was in disbelief because that week was hard for me mentally, and I didn't know how I was going to get around that track. And, you know, I prayed. I prayed a lot and read my Bible the day we, two days before. And the day of, I mean, I always read my Bible, but I was I was really in it with, with the Lord those couple of days leading up to when I ran. And, you know, that race is just the epitome of how good the Lord has been to me. Um, without him, that weekend would not have been possible at all. He has been keeping me these past two years, honestly. And so when, I, when I, I've been watching my race on repeat, you know, telling how many times, and I just, I'm, I can't even find a way to describe how it's just seeing how good the Lord has been to me. Yeah. You just said that the week was tough for you uh, mentally. Could you expand on that a bit? <laughs> Almost every week is tough for me. You know, I'm unsponsored. I don't have any support. I can't work legally. I don't have any income. So, you know, trying to figure out where your next food going to come from. If I have my mom or dad or I get some money from somebody, it's like, do I pay bills? Do I buy supplements? Do I get some groceries or do I go get me a massage and see the chiropractor so you know some days it's easier and some days it's not and that week everything was hitting a little bit harder wow for sure. starting yeah. revelations there Shafiq well, we are very <laughs> concerned to hear that but of course we have um, outlined on this show many many times that uh, the track and field contestants or, or performers really have a tough time. I mean, you know, there are some of the elite ones who are world and Olympic champions who are okay financially, but uh, a lot of athletes at your level are really struggling, aren't they? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, being a professional track athlete has been my goal since I knew who Kaniki Alexander was. My dad would always tell me about Kaniki and once I got to running in high school, I was just like, this is what I want to do. Uh, anybody asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I said, I want to run. <laughs> yeah. 
it was very immature. And when I got to college, I realized, you know, I can't run forever. So, you know, some changes had to be made. But this, I love to run. And this is something I wanted to make a career out of. Yeah. And, so, you know, I've, I've just been at it no matter the circumstance, yeah. especially these past two years. Yeah, well, we know Kaniki is an outstanding U.S. collegiate runner as well and, and Olympian Kaniki Alexander. And uh, we are not surprised to hear that you uh, have been inspired by her. Um, Shafiko, you're a, you're a 51, 7, 400 runner. Uh, the way 800s run these days with a lot of pace, um, how much emphasis do you put on your 400s and your speed work to be a more potent 800 meter runner? Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but I started running the 800 in 2020. And I don't even count that year because it was kind of half a year because of COVID. And I wasn't training for the 800. My first time on the track, I ran like 211. The next year I went to 201. And then I got down to 159 last year. And now I'm at 158. But uh, training has changed a lot over the years. At first, like I said, I wasn't training for the 800. I was still training for the four. Did a couple of sixes in practice and coach was like, all right, we're going to try the eight. And then 2021, you know, I'm I was still a part of the University of Arkansas and I had to be able to run the four by four or whatever the case was. And I was still heavily in the 400. So, you know, coach found a good balance between 400 and 800 practice. And then last year, um, I was able to work last year and I was working like 60 hours a week. And I think coach realized, you know, we only have enough time to focus on one thing really. And so a lot of my workouts was 800 based, hardly any speed work. And this past year is I, I, I could count on my hands how many times I've done speed work. I haven't really been doing much speed work, you know, but I don't, I don't stress or anything. I trust whatever the plan coach has for me. And if it's not time for speed work yet, I don't worry about it. And I've been running fast without it. So I'm not going to say I don't need it, but, you know, we still have a lot of improvements to make based on training. And, you know, um, I don't know. I is, I probably should talk to coach, but, you know, I trust whatever plan he has for me. I don't know if any 400 is still in my future. Might be, may not. <laughs> whatever it is, I trust coach and I just go along with the plan he has for me. Yeah, you know, Shafiqwa, I listen to you and uh, listen to you speak about your struggles. And I feel that because there are so many athletes who uh, are trying to make this sport work, who are trying to be the very best that they can be, but the financial situation just won't allow them to. But not many of those athletes get to be number two in the world at any point. And now you are number two in the world in the indoor 800 meters, despite the struggles that you are having. Um, I can't even say that you have had because I suspect you are still having them. First of all, how much are you hoping that this performance will change your current financial situation or at least will go a long way in helping to do that? Well, I, I trust in the Lord and whatever he has planned for me. And if the 158 helps out a lot, so be it. If the Lord says it's not time and we still got more work to do before you get some help, then, you know, I'm all for following the plan. Um, being a professional athlete is not easy. I don't think a lot of people realize how much goes into being a professional athlete, especially in the U.S. I'm from the Caribbean. Uh, if I need some food, I can't go over to my grandma house and be like, I'm hungry. You know, can I get some food or whatever the case is when you're up here? Most of the time, you're on your own from coaching fee. Like, I have not paid my coach in three years or so. And, you know, this is America. If folks don't get paid, they don't, they're not going to work, you know. And so, you know, a lot of kudos to my coach for sticking with me despite everything. And, you know, he's not in it for the money. You know, he, he saw the talent and what I am capable of and, you know, for him to, you know, be able to work with me despite, you know, not being able to pay him and stuff. Because I would like to pay my coach. Like, he sacrifices a lot. You know, uh, I don't have to pay to use the track or the weight room. I, I haven't paid my weight coach either. And so, you know, for both of them to still work with me despite all that. And to the University of Arkansas that still, you know, allows me to be around and use their facilities. Um, you got to get massage therapists, supplements, chiropractor, food living situation i've been homeless for like a couple months yeah I've, I've been especially last year i was bouncing around from home to home right now i live in like a dorm situation so i'm happy 
for these people who allow me to stay here right now. But it's it's been hard, and you know, I've I've had to put my trust in God. I I really had to put my trust in God because when I started out this last year, knowing that I wasn't gonna be able to work, I don't know what my financial situation was gonna look like. One thing I knew though that I was gonna put in the work and. After a while, I realized that's the only thing I had control of. And so when I came to practice, I worked. <laughs> I worked. I worked so hard. Sometimes I couldn't even walk off the track sometimes. And, you know, in life, you got to make sacrifices to get where you want to get to. And I made those sacrifices, but I also had to make sure those sacrifices didn't, you know, just be in vain. And so I had to do the work when I got to the track and I did that. Yeah, there is certainly something about the relationship at the moment between Caribbean athletes and the University of Arkansas. So kudos to the University of Arkansas. Um, in your current struggles, though, where is the St. Vincent and the Grenadines um, Athletics Federation or the National Olympic Committee of St. Vincent and the Grenadines? What have they been saying to you? Because you are at the moment the best athlete in your country. And yes, you have youngsters coming through, but at the moment, you are the best Olympic prospect and by a distance, the number one athlete in your country. So what have they been saying to you? Uh, <laughs> um, I've, I've been sending emails for a couple, probably since 2021, because after I got done with school in 2021, I signed up for OPT, which allowed me to work for a year in my field of study. And that's how I was able to fund my 2022 season. And it, it was hard because I was working 60 hours a week plus training. And I was even surprised I ran 159. I didn't even know I had that in me. And that day when I crossed, I cried and I cried. And unfortunately it wasn't enough to go to uh, world championships last year. It was not. But um, with regards to my association and the Olympic committee, um, from what they've been telling me is that they don't have the funds to support um, an athlete of my caliber. So, you know, um, I'm not into where funding comes from. Uh, Shafika, and... that, that's shocking to me. That is beyond shocking to me because if the authorities in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are not going to support Shafika Maloney, who is on the verge of being a world championship medalist possibly indoors, on the verge of getting to the Olympic Games and doing something special, then who are they going to support? You're not one of 10. You're not one of 20. You're not one of 30. You are one of one in your country. Right now, there's no other like you. We also got Hando Ruben. We can't skip out on Hando. He's at Penn State, and he's also doing really good. Um, I think he broke the national record as well. As for World Indoors, I don't think I will be able to go. I've been uh, – I've, my visa process. Um, each year I've been having to, you know, switch over my visa process and stuff, and I've recently applied for my O one, one and that has cost me $8,500, which my mom has been sacrificing everything she has. She works in a cruise ship and they, she, she doesn't get paid much and she has two younger kids to take care of. So every month she has been trying to help me pay for that. Um, also, with the, on top of the $8,500, there's also like a $2,500 expedited fee, which you could get a response in like 15 days. But I could barely afford the <laughs> lawyer fee, so I haven't been able to pay the expedited fee. And so... It's been processing since July last year, and it's February, and I still haven't heard anything. And so I leave the country. I can't come back in. Like, I'm okay now because it's processing, but once I hear something back, I think I have 30 days before I leave the country. But since I haven't heard anything, I can't leave the country right now. I would not be able to come back in until I hear anything. And, you know, I just ran 158, and it's pretty important that I stick to the training plan that coach has for me. Um, if it's one thing I realize, training away from your coach is not the same as training with your coach. And I don't want to do anything that would mess up, you know, the plan that's to come. I don't plan on staying at 158. Uh, obviously, there's more work to be done. Um, after my race, I realized I could go a lot faster. But we still got to work hard and make sure we can maintain what we're already doing and go even faster. Yeah. Is there any possibility that this visa situation could any at all impact 
this summer and the Paris Olympic Games? Yes, it can. <laughs> it can. I emailed them and told them about the situation recently again. Um, but um, what a good thing about the U.S. is there are a lot of meets here. I mean, it's not like any Diamond League. It'd be good to, you know, go to Diamond Leagues and stuff and add to my resume and stuff. But if I can't, there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm still sitting and waiting to hear back something. Like I said, I can't pay the expedited fees. I just have to sit and wait, honestly. Um, have you have you approached any of the shoe companies and, and, and what have they been saying? Uh, I think over the past couple of years when I first got out of college I had only ran 201 and you know everybody was running fast and then last year I ran 159 and with how everyone was running I still didn't think that was enough I just ran 158 so I, I haven't approached anyone hopefully somebody you know come knocking on my door <laughs> but I also realized I also have to go out there and stuff but um I know my coaches have been with me with that right now and told me not to worry about it and I've been trusting him in that process as well yeah, Shafiqwa, we're really happy um, that you felt comfortable enough to tell us your story. And at Sportsmax, I feel that we're in the business of pushing these stories out there, but not only that, but also pushing for some answers. And in this case, some well-deserved assistance. So I think we can promise you that this one is not done yet, but we really appreciate you coming on and telling us your portion. Thank you very much. If, if, and it's been I a pleasure also. speaking with you. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate and it. Shafiq Maloney. Lance, yeah. what a story. Oh, that's a very moving last 10 or 15 minutes we have had there, Ricardo. And I'm eager to find out, and you were pressing it just now with the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Athletic Association and the Olympic Committee. But I want to suggest that even with her world indoors glasgow trip being in jeopardy because of visa issues can't the st vincent and the grenadines foreign affairs you know ministry get involved in so i know that the u.s um system with visa and so on is is pretty tight yes but that's 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 what you have collaborations about and this is a case that definitely needs attention that's just one of uh, the startling revelations that we got in the last 12 minutes from Shafiqwa. Yeah, very much the case, Lance. And, and one thing I will say for sure that having heard Shafiqwa's story, part of it now becomes our responsibility yes. to continue to push and to continue to find a lot of these answers and ultimately um, to have Shafiqwa being in a better situation. Lance, we're talking about the young woman who is currently number two in the world. Yes. To run 158, 69 indoors is not easy. That is world-class running in any year. And it's the growth as well. It's yes. not just what she has done, but where she's coming from. Because yeah. you heard her say she was running 201 and she wasn't really challenging two or three years ago. So it has taken a lot of work for her to get where she is now. So apart from the fact that we are seeing quality from her this indoor season, I want to pay some attention to, to the work that she's done, the determination, her trust in God, as she said, to get her where she is now. And she needs some rewards. Yeah, for sure. We'll continue to track this one. There's mm. no doubt about it. Let's take a break on the Sports Mag Zone. We'll be back with more.